Hi, my name is Jack and I'm a game designer here at ASIMS at QUT and today I'll be teaching you how to play Virtual Reef Dive of the board game. Before I launch into how the gameplay works, I need to show you the three types of cards that you'll be using while you're playing the game. Here's the first type of card that you're going to come across in Virtual Reef Diver. Reef cards. So reef cards are all the various organisms and corals and algae that you'll find in the Great Barrier Reef. We have hard corals, marine mammals, algae, invertebrates, fish, soft corals, and sand. Now don't worry if you don't know what each of those things is. As you play the game, it'll teach you what they are. The second type of card you need to know about are these reef disturbance cards. These are all various things that impact the reef in a negative way, such as overfishing or pollution or oil spills or anything like that. And they come up after all the cards in the current reef have been taken by both teams. The third and final type of card that you need to know about in the game are these action cards. They directly negate the effects of the reef disturbances and are things that you can do as an individual or as an organization or a government to help conserve the reef. Things like eating sustainably or becoming a citizen scientist or publishing climate data. Now we've had a look at the three types of cards in the game, let's play. When you begin the game, we'll set it up like this. So you have a grid of reef cards in the center, action and reef disturbance cards over here, spare reef cards over here, and both teams having their rule booklet. Teams will take turns to try and identify what they see on one of the reef cards. It's important that you try and identify it before you have a look because you get points from correct guesses. So I would guess that this is a clownfish and that its type is fish. Let's have a look. Yep, so I got those two details correct. The most important detail to get correct is the type because if I guessed that wrong, then it would go to the bottom of the spare reef card deck. There are other details that I can try and guess as well, which will give me bonus points. So we would keep that for my team and then the other team would have a go at identifying something and we keep going. Gradually all of the cards on the reef are going to be taken and there's two in particular that you need to pay attention to. The sand cards. So they'll look like this, uh, either like a sea floor or some rock or rubble and they don't give you a lot of points but what they do do is they let you take an action card which can be used to negate the effects of the reef disturbances that will come up later. Now that we've cleared the reef, we'll be drawing a reef disturbance card. In this case, we've got pollution and one of two things is gonna happen. Either we follow the instructions on the card and we're all gonna lose an animal or either team can play an action card to stop that effect from happening and save your points. Now that we've gotten through our first reef disturbance, we'll draw a new reef and we'll keep doing that until we've gone through three reefs and three reef disturbances in total. Then we tally up our points and whichever team has the most wins. For more information about the Virtual Reef Diver project, head to virtualreef.org.au. To learn more about ASIMS, look up Ace Math Stats on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the game.